Color charge is a property of quarks and gluons that is related to the particle's strong interactions in the theory of quantum chromodynamics QCD. The «color charge» of quarks and gluons is completely unrelated to the everyday meaning of color. The term color and the labels red, green, and blue became popular simply because of the loose analogy to the primary colors. Richard Feynman referred to his colleagues as «idiot physicists». For choosing the confusing name, particles have corresponding antiparticles. A particle with red, green, or blue charge has a corresponding antiparticle in which the color charge must be the anticolor of red, green, and blue, respectively, for the color charge to be conserved in particle-antiparticle creation and annihilation. Particle physicists call these antiered, antigreen, and antiblue. All three colors mixed together, or any one of these colors and its complement or negative, is colorless. Or white, and has a net color charge of zero. Free particles have a color charge of zero. Baryons are composed of three quarks, but the individual quarks can have red, green, or blue charges, or negatives. Mesons are made from a quark and antiquark. The quark can be any color, and the antiquark will have the negative of that color. This color charge differs from electric charge in that electric charge has only one kind of value. However color charge is also similar to electric charge in that color charge also has a negative charge corresponding to each kind of value. Shortly after the existence of quarks was first proposed in 1964, Oscar W. Greenberg introduced the notion of color charge to explain how quarks could coexist inside some hadrons in otherwise identical quantum states without violating the Pauli exclusion principle. The theory of quantum chromodynamics has been under development since the 1970s and constitutes an important component of the standard model of particle physics. <inaudible> Red, green, and blue In quantum chromodynamics, a quark's color can take one of three values or charges, red, green, and blue. An antiquark can take one of three anticolors, called antiered, antigreen, and antiblue represented as cyan, magenta and yellow, respectively. Gluons are mixtures of two colors, such as red and antigreen, which constitutes their color charge. QCD considers eight gluons of the possible nine color anticolor combinations to be unique. See eight gluon colors for an explanation. The following illustrates the coupling constants for color charged particles. Topic. Field lines from color charges Analogous to an electric field and electric charges, the strong force acting between color charges can be depicted using field lines. However, the color field lines do not arc outwards from one charge to another as much, because they are pulled together tightly by gluons within 1 fm. This effect confines quarks within hadrons. Topic. Coupling constant and charge In a quantum field theory, a coupling constant and a charge are different but related notions. The coupling constant sets the magnitude of the force of interaction, for example, in quantum electrodynamics, the fine structure constant is a coupling constant. The charge in a gauge theory has to do with the way a particle transforms under the gauge symmetry, i.e., its representation under the gauge group. For example, the electron has charge minus 1 and the positron has charge plus 1, implying that the gauge transformation has opposite effects on them in some sense. Specifically, if a local gauge transformation phi x is applied in electrodynamics, then one finds using tensor index notation a mu a mu plus mu phi x Display style a underscore mu to a underscore mu plus partial underscore mu phi x psi exp plus i q phi x psi display style psi to exp plus i q phi x psi and psi exp minus i Q phi x psi display style overline psi to exp i q phi x overline psi where a 
mu display style a underscore mu is the photon field and psi is the electron field with q equals minus 1 a bar over psi denotes its antiparticle the positron since qcd is a non-abelian theory the representations and hence the color charges are more complicated they are dealt with in the next section equals topic quark and gluon fields and color charges equals in qcd the gauge group is the non-abelian group su3 the running coupling is usually denoted by alpha s each flavor of quark belongs to the fundamental representation 3 and contains a triplet of fields together denoted by psi. The antiquark field belongs to the complex conjugate representation 3 asterisk and also contains a triplet of fields. We can write psi equals psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 Display style psi equals begin p matrix psi underscore one psi underscore two psi underscore three end p matrix and psi equals psi one psi two psi three Display style overline psi equals begin p matrix overline psi underscore one carrot asterisk overline psi underscore two carrot asterisk overline psi underscore three carrot asterisk end p matrix. The gluon contains an octet of fields, see gluon field, and belongs to the adjoint representation eight, and can be written using the Gelman matrices as a mu equals a mu a lambda a display style math bf a underscore mu equals a underscore mu caret a lambda underscore a there is an implied summation over equals 1 2 8 all other particles belong to the trivial representation 1 of color su 3 the color charge of each of these fields is fully specified by the representations Quarks have a color charge of red, green or blue and antiquarks have a color charge of antired, antigreen or antiblue. Gluons have a combination of two color charges one of red, green or blue and one of antired, antigreen and antiblue in a superposition of states which are given by the Gelman matrices. All other particles have zero color charge. Mathematically speaking, the color charge of a particle is the value of a certain quadratic Casimir operator in the representation of the particle. The website archive turns up 40 plus results for Casimir scaling color and two results for color charge quadratic Casimir operator. One paper in particular about the Casimir scaling hypothesis explains a lattice calculation shows that the Casimir scaling hypothesis is well verified in QCD, that is to say that the potential between two opposite color charges in a color singlet is proportional to the value of the quadratic Casimir operator. In the simple language introduced previously, the three indices, 1, 2, and 3, in the quark triplet above are usually identified with the three colors. The colorful language misses the following point. A gauge transformation in color SU can be written as psi U psi, where U is a 3 times 3 matrix which belongs to the group SU Thus, after gauge transformation, the new colors are linear combinations of the old colors. In short, the simplified language introduced before is not gauge invariant. Color charge is conserved, but the bookkeeping involved in this is more complicated than just adding up the charges, as is done in quantum electrodynamics. One simple way of doing this is to look at the interaction vertex in QCD and replace it by a color line representation. The meaning is the following. Let psi i represent the ith component of a quark field loosely called the ith color. The color of a gluon is similarly given by A which corresponds to the particular Gelman matrix it is associated with. This matrix has indices I and J. These are the color labels on the gluon. At the interaction vertex one has Qi Gi J plus Q J. The color line representation tracks these indices. 
Color charge conservation means that the ends of these color lines must be either in the initial or final state, equivalently, that no lines break in the middle of a diagram. Since gluons carry color charge, two gluons can also interact. A typical interaction vertex called the three -gluon vertex for gluons involves G plus GG. This is shown here, along with its color line representation. The color line diagrams can be restated in terms of conservation laws of color, however, as noted before, this is not a gauge invariant language. Note that in a typical non-abelian gauge theory the gauge boson carries the charge of the theory, and hence has interactions of this kind, for example, the W boson in the electroweak theory. In the electroweak theory, the W also carries electric charge, and hence interacts with a photon. See also Color confinement Gluon field strength tensor Electric charge <laughs>